Hey, 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 what's up all you beautiful people? My name is Antoinette Staples and I'm super excited that you've decided to check out my YouTube channel this week. I know you could be doing anything else with your time, but you're here watching a video from me. I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. So super excited to have you if you're new to my channel. Thank you for joining me for the very first time. And if you're returning, welcome back. Whether you're new or returning, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. And as I always say in every single video, if this video blesses you, make sure you let me know, write a comment below. I want to hear from you. Your comments truly, truly bless me. And I encourage you guys to write me. It means the world to me. And I always try to get back to you. So as you all can see, I've got some flowers in this video for me, with me. And I love flowers. Anybody who knows me knows that I love flowers. And it was my birthday, y'all. This past Thursday, uh, January the 10th, I celebrated my 36th birthday. Ah! So I'm 36 years old and I got these beautiful flowers. And so I wanted to put them here in my, in my video while they're still alive. Hopefully y'all get to enjoy them as well. They had some hydrangeas in there. If y'all love hydrangeas, I do. Uh, but they were in this uh, bouquet and they're no longer here. So sorry, um, they die so easily. You guys know how to take care of hydrangeas. Why don't y'all share that with me? All right, but this week's video, the title of this week's video is Expecting Greater expecting greater um and so as i hop into this video i won't be before you guys long but i just wanted to say um you know sometimes we feel like we're expecting god for some really good things some great things but i'm challenging you to expect god for even greater than that okay um even greater than your greatest thing say god i've got this really great idea i've got this really great vision is really great dream but i'm expecting you for even greater than that i've got even a greater expectation than just for that all right so y'all expect something great from god this year something really great so we're expecting god for greater and the word expectation says it is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future so we're saying lord i've got this great expectation that something will happen or it will happen in the future and you you know i don't know how many of you truly truly really think about the blessings of god and you have great expectation i mean you might see them for other people you might believe them for other people but what do you believe god for yourself what do you believe god for yourself as i started this new year my church gave me the opportunity to speak on new year's eve service with our praise dance ministry and during that time and i'm actually going to share it in devotion through my website so sidebar if you are not subscribed to my website make sure you subscribe um at antoinettestaples.com all right i'm going to be sending out exactly what i shared but i had two minutes to speak with our praise dance ministry while someone danced and I said to them, you have not because you ask not. And now it is time to show God that we believe through our actions. So if you truly expect God for greater in your life, it is time to show God you believe through what? Somebody say your action, your actions, all right? And so I am just starting a new devotional. Um, and the devotion that I'm starting is called Chase the Lion. Now, if you've been following me for some time, you know that it's a book by Mark Batterson. Started reading that sometime last year and I haven't finished it. So, um, sparked an interest in me again this year. And so I started out this time and I'm reading the devotional. And what he said in the devotion is this, all right? He said, every dream is created twice. The first creation is mental. Every invention, every business, every building, every painting is conceived in the right brain with the imagination first. It's nothing more than a single cell idea at that point. The second creation is physical. You make it obedient to Christ via blood, sweat, and tears. All right, that's one part of the devotion for the second day. So I don't know who wants to join me in this devotion, but if you've got the Bible app and you want to join me, um, and I'm doing it uh, with someone that I love. So if you want to um, do it with the two of us, then you can join the devotion. All right, it's called Chase the Lion. So say Antoinette, hey, hey girl, I want to join the devotion with you. All right, Chase the Lion, and I'm on day two. 
all right but he goes on to say in another part if you dream if your dream is a book you make it obedient with a keyboard if your dream is playing professional sport you make it obedient at the gym and so I ask you guys, what are you expecting God for? Because some of you just dreaming in that right brain. You've got some really good ideas. You've got some really um, great business um, ventures that you want to start. You've thought of things that you can invent or create. And it's just a thought. It's just a dream. But you have not done the work. You have not done the work and you haven't even begun. You know, the interesting thing is I was watching the news the other day and they said that yesterday, actually, and they said, most people who started New Year's resolutions are in the gym or working out or doing whatever. They start falling off by day 12. And I was like, wow, isn't that interesting? In 12 days in the year, many of us stop doing whatever it is that we said we were going to start doing. Why is that? Is it because you think we don't really believe that we'll attain the goal that we set out for? Do you believe that we stop because we give up on ourselves? So today's sermon at my church was get your hopes up. That was one of his key points. And he said, get your hopes up. And so he was talking about believing God for more. All right. And so I want to know, what are you expecting from God? What is it that you're asking God to do in your life? And not only in your life, but the lives of those around you. What do your actions say what do your actions say and so scripture tells us and we're here in james 2 beginning at verse 14 and we'll read through uh verse 18. it says what does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have works can faith save him if a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. And so if you are truly expecting God to do greater in your life, I'm telling you now is a time to show God through your action. As I shared on New Year's Eve, it's time for you to go where you've never gone before, to do the thing you never thought you could do. It is time for you to walk through the door, sit in line, and take your seat at the table. What table is God preparing for you before your enemies? In the presence of them. Some of you think it's just a table of, of your enemies. It's a table of people that you think want to see you fail. Do you not know that God has prepared a seat for you at the table that is in the presence of your enemies? Some of the very people that don't want to see you profit in this earth. Some of the very people that would love it no more than if you were to fail and, and to lose or to quit. Whipped. Those are the same people that God is going to prepare a table in front of. Do you not know that God will have you pull up a seat and eat with those very people? And so some of us can't give up and quit for the wrong reason. Some of us are not asking God for what it is we truly desire. Maybe it intimidates us. Well, the very thing that intimidates you is the very thing you need to be asking God for. The very thing that seems impossible for you to do on your own is the very thing that you need to ask God for. Let me talk to you about my season where God promoted me just this past October and I had shared on my Instagram page that God gave me a promotion and we were encouraging church today to share our testimony and if you had asked me at the beginning of last year what would I be doing in terms of my professional career I would not tell you that I'm going to be doing what I'm doing right now I was a senior rep on my job I had a manager and no director and there was not an opportunity for a director position at that time. And so my manager and I had several conversations and the conversations that we had, I said, you deserve this position. You deserve to go. And my heart was pure, y'all. And I said, you deserve to be a director. You're doing the work of a director. But I also knew that I was supporting her. I was supporting her day in and day out. I was working as unto the Lord. Like we know, I've always been the type of person. And some of you might be guilty of this. And you might say, well, I'm not doing this or that because that ain't my job. Well, I want to caution you not to be so quick to say what you're not doing. Not to be so unwilling 
to take on a task that seems more out of your capacity, that seems out of your realm. Sometimes God is testing you in those things to see if you're ready to be elevated to where he's taking you. And so I was encouraging my manager. I said, you deserve to be a director. And so she was pushing for the position, y'all. She was pushing and asking um, to be promoted to a director. And then another opportunity was presented to her. And when that other opportunity was presented to her within our organization, she thought it was a great opportunity for her. She thought it was going to be something great. And I did too. And so I kept saying to her, this is what you need to be doing, right? Here's my manager about to leave our team. And we had two other reps at that time. One of them had just been promoted to another group. And so our team is going through all kinds of changes. Manager is possibly about to leave. We don't have a director position open. And I said, now what will that mean for our team? And she said, it's a good possibility that they will consider you. I'm going to tell them to consider you. I'm gonna put a good word in to them for you, all right? And she had already been pushing for over eight months to get this director position open. How many of you know that when she was um, she hired and went through the process for the position outside of our team and outside of our group, God allowed her to get that position so that he could open a door for me. There were so many times in my position that I felt like I was looked over, that I wasn't given the opportunities that I deserved, that projects and things that I had presented just fell by the wayside. I remember so, so vividly, I worked on a project for over a year and a half, two years, and I talked to my manager about it twice and was like hey whatever happened to that and she was like oh we're not gonna do that anymore they're not even gonna use the system anymore anybody know what i'm talking about like you've put your blood sweat and tears into something and someone dismiss it and not even care about it right and so i was like god really there were so many times i was like god really there was a another rep on my team who had really good strengths i mean she was a great worker i can't say anything against her and it just seemed like she had joined our team and she was getting all the opportunities and working on all, all the projects and i was like god really like I had been on this team for like seven years. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It seems like you keep getting passed up, that you keep getting overlooked, that someone's getting opportunities that you feel like you deserve. But here it is, we fast forward, all right, to an opportunity that I didn't even apply for, that I'm encouraging my manager because I wanted my heart to remain pure, that she should work for this director position. When a new opportunity came up, she should go for this position. And when that time came, they said, well, we just want you to know that if we if if you leave we're going to open up a director position for your team so the position was created y'all so here it is god allowed me as a senior rep to bypass a manager position and be promoted to a director i don't know who that speaks to and i'm just telling you that i believe god just is beginning in my life I haven't even begun to scratch the surface. And I tell you this to say this, God will open doors that were never created for you and you alone to walk into. He will move people. See, the reality is, is that my manager wanted that director position and if had God had given it to her, she wouldn't have left. And she deserved it, right? She deserved that position. But if she had gotten it, she would not have left. But God created another opportunity for her. And so please understand that just because God blesses you doesn't mean someone else can't be blessed too. We were both blessed by this. That's how good God is. That she was promoted and she was blessed to be a part of a whole other group, a director in another group because she wanted to be a director. She's a director in a whole other group and God opened the door for me. God will open doors for you. He will remove people that are in your way to get you exactly where he wants you to be. Someone prophesied over my life last July and they told me some amazing things, but they said that I would sit at the table with many great people and leaders. And now I sit at the table with executives and senior executives within our organization. That person didn't know that at that time I was getting ready to apply for the position that I'm in right now. They didn't know that I was having to do something that I had never done before, that I was having to apply and trust God that he would work out the formalities, right? Nobody goes from a senior rep to a director level position in our organization, but I had to trust God to work out the formalities. But here's what I did. I applied. I created my resume. I updated my resume. I worked diligently even in the interim when I didn't even know if it was possible. And there were times when I was afraid that it couldn't be possible. But how many of you know we serve a really great big God 
And he's saying, if you expect me for great big things, you have no idea what I will do in your life. You'll walk into every season of your life and things you didn't even ask for, you will be blessed with. And I need that word to encourage one of you today, knowing that there are some things in your life, if you expect God for greater, if you do the action, if you're not afraid to ask God, because my prayers begin to be, Lord, I know what the process is. I know how things are supposed to work, but God, I expect you to do that which man can't even understand. And God did just that. What are you asking God for in this season of your life? God says, whatever it is, I want you to know that I can do greater. I can do more. I can do things that man says that you don't qualify for. And I will say you're qualified. God says that I will do the things where people say you don't belong in the room and I'll place you in the midst. So I need someone to be encouraged today to know that God is expecting you to expect greater from him. He's expecting you to do so through your actions and through your asking, through your actions and through your asking. Begin to show God that you expect him for greater. Well, what is the door that I want you to walk that I want you to open for me? How do I want you to position me so that I can walk through that next season in my life? Whatever that thing is for you, I want you to know that it's possible. I hope and I pray that this word encouraged you. If it did, make sure you let me know. Write a comment below. That is the quick version of my promotion, y'all. It was a season, all right? And trust and believe it didn't happen overnight. It happened in months. But God is a faithful God. He is a good God. And all the times when I thought that I might have been looked over, all of the times when I didn't have an opportunity, God gave me an opportunity. God made sure the right people saw. And so sometimes we need to understand that while men may not see, God sees. While men may not give you the applause, God is applauding you. While men may not con con may not comment, may not compliment, may not um, uh, encourage. God is encouraging. God is commenting. God is saying, "Good job, my well done, my good and faithful servant." But you've got to do the work, all right. And so, whoever that word is for, I pray that it encourages you. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you're a good God. You're faithful. You're loving. You're kind. You're just. There's none like you in all the earth. God, we thank you that you're just getting started in our lives. You're just scratching the surface. So we pray that you will move us to the next place that you want us to be. Increase our faith. Increase our trust in you. Show us what you're able to do, Father. Help our faith to meet you where you are in our lives and where you want us to be. Help us not to be afraid of men, oh God, but help us to trust in you. God, we thank you now. We praise you and we glorify you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. God, I just want to thank you. Um, guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching. God is good. And he is saying, expect greater because I want to do greater in your life. All right. It's time we all put on our wings and soar.